before we go on, I want to do our new uh, segment, which we're calling the future in a minute. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you, in this case, five questions, rapid fire, and get your rapid fire answers. Here's the first question. What is the one thing that gives you the most hope about the future? This is the best time to do science because of the speed at which we can address hypotheses. So essentially, you can dream up a hypothesis and go into the lab and test it so quickly that I think we will get answers to any of the remaining questions in biology and medicine at a rate that's never been possible before. What's one thing you want people to walk away from this episode remembering? The ribosome is the center of life. Pay attention to your ribosomes. I view the cell as a sack of these ribosomes and perhaps the most important to think about in both health and disease. Aside from money, what is the one thing you need to succeed in your research? What we need is more of a community. I would say that people that start to think about what is potentially this ribosome code become addicted to it because it's the wild, wild west. We really don't know much about it. So what we need is we need to develop a larger community of scientists from across all different types of disciplines that can help us to crack this code. If all goes well, what does the future look like? We can deconstruct and reconstruct life by being able to deconstruct every single ribosome and reconstruct it at will. And this uses approach to basically learn about how every single protein in our body is made and how we can use this as a clever engineering tool for curing diseases. If you were starting all over again and you needed to get your training or your degree in a different discipline, what would it be? I have a very unusual background in the sense that when I was in NYU, I was studying anthropology. And at that time, what made me switch from anthropology to biology was that anthropology was very, very descriptive. So we could describe ancient matter. We can look at Neanderthals and characterize their bones. But now we can sequence these ancient samples and sort of anthropology has really taken off. And I've become so interested in it again. So there's a little bit of that anthropology desire still in me, but clearly I would be an anthropologist. 